Dear white people, mm. let's just get into it. Hello, hello, and hello. Welcome to another episode of Suave Life TV with the lovely Brittany L. Hey guys. Yesterday, we had the honor and privilege, as well as pleasure, to uh, screen Dear White People with the writer and director, what was the name again? Justin Simmons. Justin Simmons. Papa. The show was, it was great. It was- It was my life it one was, film. It was done really well, oh, wasn't it? so good. So good. What was your favorite part of the movie? That's a really hard thing to pick. My favorite part of the movie, it, it's kind of a conjunction of points when, I don't want to give it away, but you know what? By the time that the, well, I don't want to say by the time we put this out that y'all have already seen it, but it comes out October 24th. The message around everything mm -hmm. where the main character, Sam White, is giving her blurbs of what Dear White People, Dear White People is her radio show. Right. And she says a lot of different Dear White People messages, which you can find on YouTube if you take the time out to check out. Uh, but I would say all of those moments when she says her Dear White all People of her moments. moments. Do you remember the funniest Dear White People Dear moment? Dear White People. <laughs> Dear White People. The quota for having a black friend has now been raised to two. Therefore, your weed man, Tyrone, Doesn't no longer count. counts. <laughs> that was that, by that far. That might have been the funniest one. Because at the moment, you can see like everybody on campus looking around, like, I gotta tag in somebody I find else. Another person. And all the black people another. are sitting there like, oh gosh, I'm about to get recruited. So, yeah. I definitely, I love the movie. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love the movie. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to mm -hmm. stay and watch it again and have friends that I can sit around and talk with about it because we had a panel discussion kind of right. afterwards. We, it was QDZ, it was um, some other people. And we a couple know other people. And, and Justin Simmons, he was on the panel. But yeah. one of the things yeah. I just personally really don't like is when people kind of have their own platform and they stand on it and they want to say their story, speech, agenda, whatever that is. And he so, wasn't that type. Who Justin? Yeah. No, he Just, wasn't that Justin type. It was the other type. people he was on the he was on the panel with. Oh, okay. The other yeah, people he was yeah, on the panel yeah. with were very much about sharing whatever their thing was about it, and it was like one of the professors of Africana studies at one of these universities at University of Pennsylvania. UPenn, she had seven questions in one sentence to ask, and I was overwhelmed. I was myself. confused. Right. So that was one. That and was then one. There was a movie critic. A uh, movie critic who interviewed like Monique when she won her Academy Award. And he was crying on the phone and talking about Precious and I mean. And then no, it was a PhD. Uh, from Harvard. No, 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 no. He was from uh, Princeton. Was it Princeton? It was Princeton. I thought it was Harvard. Nah, it was Princeton. It was Princeton. They screened the movie at Harvard. Maybe but it was a PhD okay. uh, fellow from Princeton. He had his little two bit too. Nonetheless, it was a great film. I encourage everybody to go and see it again, and I'm gonna see it again because I actually want to help support because we got in and see we're it not for buying free. bootlegs. We're gonna go get the real no version. bootlegs. That's one thing you preached. Yes, we are going to go get it and really like make it a part of our DVD Blu-ray collections. I don't do Blu-ray anymore, so I'll do DVD or I'll do a digital download. You can do that, that too. once it comes out, but it, it's not out in movie theaters yet. But it'll be out very soon, very very soon. What was your favorite part? Actually, I'm, I'm gonna uh, uh, my, real quick. My favorite part was um, when the girl, uh, I forget what her, Coco. Coco. So when Coco um, basically was gonna do anything to get in with the white people. I thought it was really interesting because the dynamic was, was interesting because she knew that she had, what was her name before? Calandra. Calandra. She's like, my parents might as well name me Shaniqua. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was fun. She was very intelligent, very educated. She decided not to go to an HBCU. So there were so many different dynamics and so many different changes in the movie. And I thought that hers was very well played because some people think the way Coco thought. But at the end of it, she realized that the so-called people just didn't care about her. So she went back to her ways. And then she kind of started dating the guy who was dating the white girl, the black guy. What was his name? Troy or something like that? The black guy? The Yeah, name the, was like Troy. The, the, the like president. Yeah, uh, the president's son. Troy, yes. So it was, it, nonetheless, I don't want to ruin it for you. It was a good movie. I encourage everybody to go out and see it. Moving on. Um, something that's going on right now that is 
affecting a lot of lives and could possibly be affecting a, a lot more lives is this Ebola outbreak. Now, they're saying that it's contained and things of that nature, but a nurse from Texas, what well, was Texas, right? Her, she's from Texas. She's from Texas. And they have her in Texas. her name was Nina, Nina Pham. So, I think we have an image of her. Yeah, we absolutely do. We have a little bit of mini background on her. Mm -hmm. she, she was yeah. just infected. She just got infected, and it's crazy because apparently she did everything well, everything right, but for whatever reason, she is now infected. And the gentleman who died, who she helped, Eric Duncan. Oh, yes. Thomas, Thomas Eric. Eric Duncan. This gentleman is now yes, dead. Indeed. And she now cont contracted it from this gentleman. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, what do you what do you think about that? Ebola is a frightening concept because it gives me the images of the movie Outbreak when I was younger. Do you remember that movie? I remember that movie. Remember like all the people were trying to free the monkeys from yeah. like this testing facility. A very and not valiant knowing, no, they had, yeah. ability, you know, like, oh, we want to, you know, human animal rights, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a two minute video that we're just going to show a little bit of that basically kind of explains a lot of what the understanding is or is not of basically what Ebola is. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you are, who you're around, and I've heard a lot of reasons as far as why we typically won't contract it because of the burial practices and a lot of the things that we do here in this country. Okay. So it's not something we need to worry about, but just for your awareness, pay attention for the next two minutes. sweat, tears, semen, vomit, urine, or feces. And it can only enter the body through direct contact with cuts or abrasions on the skin or through the eyes, nose, mouth, throat, or reproductive organs. People can also get infected when eating meat from or coming in contact with contaminated animals. The virus can survive several hours in a dried state on doorknobs or countertops. If the fluid remains wet and at room temperature, it can survive for days outside the body. Most people get it through contact with bodily fluids of patients or the deceased. But when is someone with Ebola actually contagious? The short answer, when they start to show symptoms. Those symptoms, though, can take from 2 to 21 days to kick in. In other words, a person could travel and interact with others for days, weeks, without passing on the virus. The average incubation period is 8 to 10 days. The early symptoms of the disease, fever, weakness, muscle pain, headache, and sore throat are often mistaken for the flu, malaria, typhoid fever, or dysentery. But then things get worse. Vomiting, bloody diarrhea, often internal and external bleeding, skin rashes, and purple spots on the skin. Once the symptoms set in, the person is contagious and has 6 to 16 days to either beat the virus or die. The death rate, high, 50 to 90% chance of death depending on the strain and access to medical care. If an infected patient with a strong immune system gets proper care, the chance of surviving goes up. But if they survive, the virus could remain in the semen for up to three months. And if you survive, you have immunity for at least 10 years. But what's still unknown, if you're immune from other strains of Ebola. Answers and questions for a frightening disease. Speechless. Um, like that's scary. I didn't know half of that information until watching that video. I just don't understand why nobody, everybody is hearing different things about this illness and this sickness, but essentially, if this is what it is. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to be worried. And I mean, I'm gonna just say the Walking Dead. That's all I'm gonna say. And and it's kind of ironic that these places, these things are happening. There was a, there was a there's an issue where like they were testing a little boy or someone in Miami mm -hmm. and someone else in Atlanta. We all know the Walking Dead is based out of Atlanta, and Cause that's where the CDC is. Exactly. So Center for Disease Control. My main concern is specifically the fact that. They're saying that it's not very possible that things could happen uh, based on the life that we live as American citizens. 
our burial practices, a lot of the things that we do in our daily lives. But there are a lot of dirty behind people. And you know somebody you work with, let alone I work in a school where the population of students is predominantly international uh, from Caribbean and Hispanic countries from the South America, kind of Central America areas, as well as even some students from West and East Africa. So I am concerned about that myself. Hand sanitizer is great, but let's not make hand sanitizer be our main focus. There's nothing like using some soap and washing your hands. Absolutely. Period. Being conscientious. And a lot of these symptoms, which is very concerning for me, is they can be confused with what's happening right now. Flu season is starting. Flu season is absolutely starting. So make sure that... Stay on top of your health. Stay on top of your health. Your make kids. sure you're washing your hands. Make sure when you go outside or you come inside that you wash your hands before you eat. Right. Wash your hands. Don't keep your hands in your mouth. You know they say unconsciously we put our hands in our mouth about 30, what, a thousand times a day. That's a crazy number. That. That's weird. That's so touching terrible. our face, hands in our mouth, biting our nails a thousand times a day. Fun fact, did you know that over your lifetime average you eat eight spiders in your life in your sleep? I might have like 12 already. So I'm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but not to make light of the situation. Right, but right. honestly, it's one of those things where you just have to be a little bit more conscientious, especially when you're dealing with a situation, a scenario that could potentially be life-threatening for you, for others. And the main concern, I think, that's really big about what happened with Thomas Duncan is the mm -hmm. fact that the nurse, Nina Pham, who was helping him, she had on full protective gear the bubble suit that you basically see in like movies and like that you see people wearing in these high hazardous situations. Right. She had that on and she's actually still contracted Ebola. So they're trying to figure out how it happened. And you know, that could be, was she pricked by something? Was it in the process of her taking off the suit that she touched somewhere and then she got the fluid onto her that somehow she rubbed her eye? She went and had like, there's so many orifices what ifs. and what ifs that like, what if you did this and then rubbed your eye? What if you did, I mean, you sit down to a keyboard, you touch a doorknob, you push an elevator button. You, when you rinse your hands off mm -hmm. after you finish washing your hands, don't turn the knob off with the same hands. After you get the paper towel, do very that true, first and true. then go back. That's let's, what you should do. Let's just make sure that we figure out mm -hmm. what happened, what it is, and let's make sure that it doesn't happen again. Because I like my life and you never let's know. Just keep it that way. Please. Yeah. Moving on, did you hear that uh, Dr. Cornell West was arrested in Ferguson? I did hear that. So basically, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody understands what happened with uh, Michael Brown. So basically, Michael Brown is a young man, he was 18 years old, about to go away to college. He was shot and killed in the street by cops. So now everybody is in an uproar, and this happened about a month ago. So now, and Cornell West was already on the field or the floor already there. So something happened. I think and we have a picture of it we can show real quick. Yeah, let's take a look at this photo. So you can see here where it kind of begins in this area. There some sort of front to face, like face to face interaction with the police. Mm -hmm. And we're not sure what transgresses there that turns into them interacting with each other and then now Dr. West is being arrested and walked off with it appears to be a pastor or a priest that's next to him right here by the police officers that are in this space. So this happened for, um, they were arrested for civil disobedience. Sounds very familiar. On Monday, uh, happy Columbus Day, a.k.a. Rape, Pillage, and Steal uh -oh. Day. Message. And you know, I'll say it. <laughs> the only Christopher we acknowledge is Wallace. Hence. Mm. Right. Message. So. So I think that it's definitely something to be recognized that it's not just the, I've, I've seen comments about the situation where people are like, get ready for him to sue the city, to do this, to do that. I think, I think and know that there's a strategic way that obviously these things happen and it will mm -hmm, be, mm -hmm. you know, it, it will transpire in some manner that will be effective, hopefully for, hopefully for the movement, for this family and for uh, the message of what needs to happen. But I would love to know the backstory about how and why all of this happened. And I think it's going to happen really soon. It's going to come out. We're going to figure out what happened because if you are just walking or speaking your mind, 
your First Amendment right. You can't get arrested for pissing you, somebody off. Yeah, you can't. Now, unless you excite a riot, and if they're saying that's what he did, then he has the right to be arrested. But I don't think that that was the case. I think I don't think so either. I think that they're still fighting for equality in Ferguson, and he was arrested because of that. So, um, Dr. Cornell West, we're pretty sure he already, I'm hoping he already got out. Um, I didn't hear anything on the news yet or anything, but I'm looking out for it. So, yeah. So, next thing to talk about. Next thing, next discussion, next order of business. What is this going to be about? <clears throat> this is somebody who I used to have the biggest crush on as a youngster. Light, right? I, I don't know. And then <laughs> it came out that she's no longer dating men. Was she's she happy to. Men? I, I thought so. I hope so. That doesn't mean that there was ever a chance for you, though, Andy. Anyway, we're talking about Optimism. Raven Simone. <laughs> you have to be optimistic in life. Come on. Go ahead. Come Go on. ahead. But I we're digress. talking about Raven Simone. Um, Raven Simone was just interviewed by Oprah Winfrey, and yes. they had a great conversation. And a part of that conversation, it just went to a whole nother different topics. And she said that she wants to be labelless. So she said she's not African American. She's American. She's not gay. She's in love. But one thing that she did say was she was happy the day that she found out that she could marry whoever she was in love with who happened to be a woman. I think we have a little two minute ish clip. We got a two minute clip? Oh, two minute ish. We giving y'all a lot of clips. We today. giving y'all some info so you can I see. If you, you missed the topic, now you get to see I it. I hope you like it. I hope you love it. Let's take a look. August 2nd, 2013. So was that your way of coming out, Was uh, of saying you were gay? That was my way of saying I'm proud of the country. But I will say that um, I'm in, I mean, an amazing, happy relationship with my partner, a woman. And on the other side, my mother and people in my family, they've taught me to keep my personal life to myself as much as possible. So uh, I try my best to, you know, hold the fence where I can, but I am proud to be who I am and what I am. So when did you know who you were and what you were? In that topic of dating and in love, I knew when I was like 12, I was looking at everything. <laughs> were you looking at boys and girls? Yes, ma'am. Did you have a word for it? Because I think when you're younger, you don't even have language for what it is. I don't, I don't, I don't need language. I don't need a category statement for it. I think that's one thing that kind So you of, don't want to be labeled gay? I don't want to be labeled gay. I want to be labeled a human who loves humans. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. Oh, girl, don't, don't set up his Twitter on fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, what? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, what did you just say? She said, look. She just... You feel some type of way? I don't feel any type of way about it. I mean, if you want to be... If you, whatever your preference is, but she says she doesn't want to be labeled as gay. She wants to be labeled as somebody who loves other human beings, and she doesn't want to be labeled as African American. Your pigment says otherwise, but I mean, whatever works for you works for you. I understand her definition of not wanting to be labeled because when you create labels, it turns it into I'm this or I'm that or I'm this or I'm that. And honestly, a lot of the socializing of what Civilization has basically begat separation of humanity, period. By socioeconomic status, by color, by ability, or lack thereof, okay. in all of those aspects. So I understand what she's saying there. So it's a very progressive thought and a very not receptive to progressive thought society, especially when people are very ready to say, I'm Republican, I'm Democrat, is this I'm, a this, psych, I'm is this, is this, that. Is this one of those? This is a psych moment. Oh, it's a ready. psych moment, okay. So basically, I understand exactly where she's coming from. And it's the same way I understand how a lot of people will react to that, like how dare she say she doesn't want to be labeled as black or this or that, because you can't deny who you are. Right. Now, I know that we all have our own definition of who we are and how we came to be that person, I don't, I don't see any challenge of my black womanness being negated because she doesn't ascribe to one aspect that is or is not of hers that she chooses to accept. Okay. 
So I feel like it's none of my business. If she does or does want to do what she does or does want to does or does not want to do, that's up to her. So I get what she's saying there. At the same time, it's like, yeah, boo, you black. Because if slavery came back and they put us all on a boat, you would go too, even though you looking like what? What she look like right now? What she look like right now? She like a unicorn, man. Exactly. Like a true blue unicorn. Anywho, no shade, Raven, but anywho, light bright, light bright, shine so bright. If you, if <laughs> Raven Simone, if you like it, we love it. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It is how it's been, and it's all right. I feel like, you know, you just kind of have to be understanding and receptive to it. Not everybody's going to agree with and accept what you do and don't do. Right. Do and don't say. Right. And you just got to kind of maneuver amicably between each other with that fact. Speaking of that, have you been watching Blackish? Yes. Do you love it or do you love it? I love it. Like, I love it. Like, I love it. I that love it. is a great show. And I think it's something that we've been needing for quite some time. And when I say we, I don't mean black people. I'm just talking about in general. It just, it breaks down. It's like Blackish is like the family that. Troy came from right when right. before he gets to Privileged Winchester. Okay, families, yes, because his daddy is a senior vice president or something, and uh -huh. his mommy's a doctor, uh -huh. and he's got these siblings, and granddad is there, so he has all these positive, healthy influences and role models around him. But there's this continuity of trying to maintain their blackness in, Which the, is su hilarious. in the suburban society in the suburban that they're society. in, but then also maneuver that into this corporate academic space the that sun looks also... like Drake the really? sun, the sun looks like Drake the sun looks like Drake he, yo. he looks like Drake a little bit yo. but <laughs> he could have been right on Degrassi for real so I definitely see this as a positive show mm -hmm. like it's funny because I think Justin said in the uh show or in the, after the the movie during the panel like he's like I would love to see this show continue right um this Absolutely. movie continue as like a sitcom something like that I definitely think it could because I, I would love to see this turn into like the next A Different World. Note that you heard it here first. That was deep. Now, I don't that know could, about A Different World, it but. It could be. It, think about it. I mean, think about Like, we're dealing with a different world. It, it's a, it's another different world. Very That's true. That's the title of the show, and I copyrighted here. Brittany L. said it. Another Different World. Here on Swap Life TV. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you understand this. I definitely think that that could be something that is very very good for a lot of people uh i know we're running out of time but i know that i had a very positive inspirational move forward and be powerful quote that i wanted to share you have something you want to share with others uh, I, I do but me being the gentleman that i am i will let the lady go first thank you what i wanted to share mm -hmm. is a quote by a lady who before my show was called Extraordinariness with Brittany L, it was called Your Life with Brittany L. And I like the, I like them both. They're they're both good, but Iyanla mm -hmm. got fixed my life and it was like, ah, I'll let you have that. Okay, go ahead. So it just kind of grew and became something different. Okay. And the quote that I have is until you accept complete responsibility for your life, your life will keep sending you experiences designed to get your attention. Wow. That's from Ayanna Benzant. And, of course, we've seen her show Fix My Life and all the different things that she does because she is basically trying to get people to own up to take responsibility for for the things that they've done and experienced and gone through. I concur. If you constantly see something happening around you or if you constantly get getting the same message or getting the same friends or the same man or the same woman or the same job or lack thereof, mm -hmm. Pay attention to what energy you put out because literally you are what you sow into the world. That's what you'll reap. So obviously you haven't gotten the message yet. There's something that you have to learn so that you can go on to that next level and be the best person, be your most authentic and best version of yourself because you're not doing it yet. So take it as a moment to be great. Don't take it as a problem. Take it as a challenge to be solved. It's just like a piece of the puzzle. Hmm. Put it together. Very, very well put. It's your own box. I mean, Listen. look for it. Go ahead. I'm going to let him have so, it. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to, uh, that was deep. That was really deep. So, mine I try. comes from the great Uncle 
Russell Simmons. And it says, as long as you're passionate about your vision, you should keep moving forward. So regardless if you aren't making the money that you want to make, as long as you stick to it and do exactly what it is that you want to do, in no time you will reap what you sow and you will see the fruits of your labor. So don't look at it now as, oh man, I'm not, I'm, I want it, but I can't get it because I can't afford it. Just keep doing it and just keep doing it and keep doing it. And once you do that, I think you'll be okay. Um, Russell Simmons is somebody that I look up to along with a whole bunch of other people. It's only because they're doing positive things and they have been where we have been mm -hmm. or where we currently are. So that's just something that's and just my little- And where we have been. And girl. where we have been. So that's just a little tidbit. I agree. I have a quick question. Do we have time for our uh, timeline topic? I think we might have, so we're trying we have something like five new. Minutes and we got we're, about five minutes, and we, we're, we are going to give you our timeline topic. So our timeline topic, are, are we going to do it from Facebook today? We're going to do, do it. From we're going to do it from Facebook. This thing is pretty hilarious. So basically, what timeline topic is, we look through our timeline, which we're going to show you, and as we look through it, we'll just talk about what we see, like this one right here we gotta go like this one what is, what is this i don't even know what this is but i don't want to talk about to it. the end that like big booty bees be careful what you ask for lol how is that do you want some of that i don't want none of that let's keep scrolling oh no 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 <laughs> okay, now you want to do this? No, no, we, we we just gonna keep going. That's you, crazy. Do you want to show this video? You want to show them what it is? It's up. Oh my god, sagging! Y'all need to stop it. That timeline is up. Facebook is flipping his video, his 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 dirty dancing routine. So let. This young man does a dirty dancing routine. Oh, oh, he's quite talented. Look at him go. You better work. Look at him. They better put him in dancing in the star, dancing for the stars. Dancing with, with, with the, the stars. stars. <laughs> star search. Look at him. Go ahead, child. Oh, look at him. Oh. 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 He's ready. Oh. He's ready. be an old video and it's probably just getting around yo now. he was yo he's going oh he got the swap oh. Sw oh. pow pow oh get him the, uh. get him get him <laughs> boom uh. oh my god oh Whoa. what what what's what that what's that dance called this is from dirty dancing no 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 that was the dirty wine he did not that was wine. the dirty wine Oh, he know. Oh, his mom oh, loves this much. movie. Let's, let's get it. Oh, he did the salsa. Without the. Have you seen Dirty Dancing? Without the salsa. He's doing it. Oh, let's see his round. Oh, 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 oh. Look at him at the end. Uh oh. All he needs is his partner. Yo, She's probably he, at her play date right now. Look at his hips. This kid is moving his hips right now. He's ready. They better put him in some ballroom classes like yesterday. Oh man. Wow. We got time for one more. We got time I think for we got more. time for one more. Monday's got me like. So I'm assuming that this is a young lady who's irritating everybody at work. So it's Monday at work and she's just way too loud on the phone. Did I miss it? That's, oh. that's how my coworkers be having me. My coworkers be having me like. What's the craziest thing you've ever done at work? I can't get into it right now. <laughs> no, I'm joking. The craziest thing I ever done at work was, um, you know, I don't do nothing crazy at work. I'm very professional when it comes to work. That's what you like to tell yourself. Okay. I'm very professional. I work with the kids. I try to help them out. So Right, right. <laughs> we are going to continue with some timeline topics. Ooh, they are going to be interesting. We're going to take it from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram, Instagram to Vine. Vine has crazy 
crazy stuff. One thing I'm interested to see is what any told me about, which was black Twitter versus white Twitter. Aw, man. Right on time for Dear White People. So this will be interesting. So listen up. Thanks for watching another episode of Swap Life TV. And remember, if you guys like it, then me and Brittany love it. Stay suave, my friends. Bye, guys. Ain't no use to you, bringing my last stop, wasting my time. Now I 